Well, as you know, George, uh, the Resist Movement for a People's Party was established uh, not long after the 2019 general uh, election. We initially started out with the idea of, of building a grassroots movement and thought that maybe a new political vehicle might emerge from the grassroots. But members felt that they wanted to uh, uh, create a political vehicle uh, sooner than perhaps I initially uh, anticipated that they would. And we've been in you know, various iterations and discussions about uh, you know, how to take that forward. And we've recently uh, had a vote of our members, and they've overwhelmingly voted to join forces with the Workers' Party, because I think people recognise and, and feel that the Workers' Party offers the, you know, the best possible electoral vehicle to deliver a, a, a socialist anti-imperialist message, uh, and certainly one which is uh, you know, a counterweight to the neoliberal establishment parties that is the Labour Party, of course, now, and the, and the Conservative Party. But you know, all stripes that are currently represented in the House of Commons uh, to varying degrees, are signed up to the war machine and are bought into neoliberal economics. So I just wonder, George, uh, you know, obviously we are writing out to all of our members, um, uh, inviting them to join us, uh, as it were, on this journey, and our supporters as well, to join us on this journey and, and getting them on board with the uh, Workers' Party. I wonder if you can just, just briefly uh, give a word of encouragement and, and suggest why people our members and supporters ought to consider uh, joining forces and, and, as it were, signing up the membership subscription to become uh, active members of the Workers' Party? Well, hallelujah uh, is my first response. Uh, it's been a very long time since you and I uh, were in the same political party, Chris, although we have been fellow travellers throughout the uh, journey. Uh, and uh, to be back in the same party as you would be a great, uh, honor and a privilege for me. As you know, I, I was, I think, uh, a consistent and strong supporter of yours, both when you were in the Labour Party and then when you were uh, cruelly, uh, vindictively uh, thrown out of it. And I described uh, the, the persecution of Chris Williamson as a modern day Dreyfus affair. And I hold to that, absolutely. And I I am uh, honoured to be marching again under the same banner with you for the things we jointly believe in. And that goes for all your friends also, particularly our mutual friend, Sean Bloor, who uh, it will be a great asset. You and she and all your friends would be a great asset to a party that is uh, very definitely growing fast now. We are, we're getting former members of parliament, we're getting former ambassadors. We're getting workers off the shop floor. Our brand of, of common sense socialism, which concentrates on the bread and butter uh, of domestic politics and on the anti-war, anti-imperialist thrust of our work, which led to you and me jointly founding the No to NATO, No to War uh, organization, which is... Uh, really going like a train now is uh, is overshadowing any and all of the other uh, anti-war organizations in Britain. So I'm feeling uh, very happy that you have made this decision. Uh, I want to emphasize to your members uh, that the uh, the members of the Workers' Party in total will shape the party, its policies, its uh, tactics, its strategy. Uh, this is not a top-down party at all. It is a democratic organization where everyone's voice is valued and listened to and collective decisions are made about the way forward. Uh, so for anyone who's worried that that might be otherwise, let me reassure them uh, on that point. Uh, you don't have to like me, uh, um, and I might not like you. Uh, you just have to know that we have to be together. We have to get together because time is short. It's only a year or so to the general election. And the Workers' Party has already proved its worth in elections. When we stood in, uh, in, in, in Batley and Spen in the by-election, we got first time out 
almost 23% of the vote. With a bit of luck and a bit more wind at our back, we, we would have won. Uh, and Starmer would have been out. Imagine that. He would undoubtedly have been overthrown at that stage. And now all these Labour people are stuck with them and uh, and they're stuck in a train that's going absolutely nowhere. I think we are the best bet for electoral breakthrough in Britain. We can win at uh, all levels, uh, but we will stand a far better chance of doing so if we have really significant political figures like you uh, joining us. And so that's why I say I'm very, very happy uh, that you've made this decision. And I hope as many of your members and supporters as possible will take the same course. Well, members have voted overwhelmingly to make the shift. And uh, we hope that those whose membership subscriptions have lapsed and those who are just simply registered supporters of the Resist Movement will, will join us on this journey. I think it is an exciting step. Um, George Galloway is the real deal. He's, he's got a proven track record. You mentioned the Batley and Spen by-election, uh, George, uh, uh, and that was a, you know, a tremendous campaign. And I know that not just from somebody you know, speaking from afar uh, or witnessing it from afar. I was actually there uh, on the ground campaigning alongside you for, I think, around about a fortnight. And uh, oh, wow. it was a really excellent, exciting campaign. And it had echoes, I've got to say, more than echoes, actually. It was reminiscent of the excitement that we all felt in the uh, 2017 general election. There was a sense of hope and, and, and purpose. And, you know, my experience of, you know, all the Workers' Party members from George Galloway down are incredibly uh, uh, welcoming, uh, committed, dedicated socialist anti-imperialists. And, you know, George talked about common sense socialism. And that was my watchword, something that I hope that we could build when Jeremy Corbyn became the leader of the Labour Party. Um, sadly, it wasn't to be. Uh, and I've been saying, you know, for the last few years now that, you know, we we, we you know, we, we can't just sort of, you know, sit back and, and lick our wounds. We, we have to dust ourselves down and mm. continue to fight. And, and I just think that uh, we've got a, a great chance now. Uh, yes, you know, we're starting from a from a low base compared to where, you know, the Labour Party was. The Labour Party has been in existence for 100 plus years, 120 years now, um, and has got that infrastructure in place. But, uh, it, you know, we've got a sense of purpose, it seems to me, in the, uh, in the Workers' Party. We've got a, a fantastic leader in... George Galloway, uh, as I say, somebody who has a proven track record and takes no, no prisoners, and somebody who is, a, you know, a wonderful champion for socialism and anti-imperialism. And uh, as George has just said, there, uh, it's a very democratic party, welcoming of new members, welcoming their thoughts, their views, uh, and their contributions to help to to develop policy. So, as I say, George, I think this is really an exciting step. I hope people who are watching this video will uh, take on board what we've said uh, in this uh, discussion. Uh, and, uh, you know, join us, uh, as I said, uh, on this journey. And, uh, you know, let's build this party and let's uh, put forward, you know, a credible challenge to the mainstream uh, political uh, parties. And, uh, you know, we will be fielding some candidates, won't we, George, in the next uh, general uh, right. election. And, uh, you know, you never know. We, you know, we may make a breakthrough, but, we, you know, we, we've, well, I, maybe... I believe that we have an obligation to, 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 right. to, to do this because, the main simple part of the Labour Party has abandoned the working class. It's abandoned uh, the struggle to, to oppose war, to offer a, you know, a genuine alternative to the neoliberal consensus, which has caused huge damage and, uh, and deprivation and poverty in this country. 14 or 15 million people living in poverty as a consequence of an economic system that both the mainstream political parties are absolutely signed up to. So if Labour were to win the next general election, there will be no meaningful change. No, they're not hiding that, Chris. Uh, they are openly uh, slaughtering every sacred cow. Every one of Starmer's 10 commitments have long ago been butchered and buried. Uh, they're not hiding it. So anyone still clinging to the, to the uh, fool's gold of labor promises uh, really needs to give themselves a shake. We're going to have to start again in Britain to build a socialist alternative. And uh, I haven't found a better one than the Workers' Party. And the more people join it, the more people of experience and substance who join it, uh, the better and more powerful it will be. Who knows?
Absolutely, George. And I'll just conclude with the maxim of the Labour movement. Unity is strength. So join us. Let's be united and let's build this credible challenge to the neoliberal war machine status quo. Amen.